you want to get on the action, we want to hear from you. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com. Slide in our DMs on IG at Fade Route Podcast. Drop us a DM on Twitter at Fade Route DNZ. Comment on our YouTube channel, The Fade Route with DNZ. Questions, comments, picks, segment suggestions, you name it, we want to hear from you. Get at us in crowd. Coming at you from the Hey Yo Studios, it's the Fade Route with DNZ. Here are your hosts, D and Z. Coming at you live from the AO studio. It's hey, the yo. Fade Route with D and Z. I am D. And we've got a great show for you tonight. So many headlines, so many high headlines. We'll begin today's show with the release of the NFL schedule. The schedule will actually be released tomorrow, but they've been dropping things here and there throughout the week. Uh, everyone's speculating on who their team will open against and which games should kick off the season, who should the Chiefs open their title against, and who the Jets should play week one. So, Z, I'm going to ask you. I want to know, who, who should the NFL go to? Who should have to go into Chiefs' kingdom week one of the regular season? And then who should Aaron Rodgers have to debut in a Jets uniform against? Well, let's look at the schedule, right? Like Woody Page always says, look at the schedule, guys. We got AFC East. You have the NFC. You have the NFC North. So you're going to get the likes of the Jets. You're going to get the Bills. You're going to get the Dolphins. You're going to get the Lions, you're going to get the Packers. You well, have... hold on. So for the Chiefs, they're home This is the Chiefs' opponent. schedule. Oh, uh, it's just, just, just their schedule. Yeah. I mean, because I'm this assuming just their that they're, they're opening up at home. They're they not have to. The yeah. But you're looking at the Bills, the Dolphins, the Bears, the Lions, the Bengals, the Chargers, the Broncos. Like, this is what the Chiefs are going up against. This is a very, yeah. very good schedule. Even if they wanted to open them on the road, they could. But if it's going to be a home opener, I'm looking at this. And what really gets me excited is a rematch of the Super Bowl. You have the opportunity to put the Eagles and the Chiefs back on the field. Only a few short months after they did the deal. Yeah. You have a rematch. And potentially what could be a rematch in the future as well. So that is something that is very, very intriguing. Now, as far as the Jets go, like they have a lot of great choices, right? They're going to play the Patriots. They're going to play the Dolphins. They're going to play the Bills. But to me, there really is only one option. There is only one. They draw the NFC East this year. There is no other option except the Giants on 9-11 at MetLife. There's absolutely... You have the patriotism angle. You have the Snoopy Bowl angle. You have Aaron (laughs) Rodgers. Like, you have... Like, even, you know... Even though it's a... Even if they were on the road... It is. It's a giant game. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> as a Giant fan, is that what you want? Do you want to play the as, Jets sweet one? As a Giant fan, I, it's immaterial to me. Like, the, oh, it doesn't the, matter the to you. It doesn't matter to me because okay. they're going to they're gonna play each other anyway. I, there's no rivalry between the Jets and Giants. No, 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 no. You know, it's not like no. you're playing the Cowboys week one. No, so, that's a rivalry. Right, right, right. Yeah. So for me, like, that's what I would like to see. Like, you know, go up again, you know, get it out of the way early. That, yeah. That's what I would like. If to, to for the Jets to get this out of the way early, because the real main event would be Chiefs Eagles. Chiefs Eagles would be the main event for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah so for me, um, I would have liked to see the Chiefs open against the Bengals, but they're going to be playing them on New Year's Eve. 
Um, so the first game of the season, to me, that should always be a cupcake, right? That's supposed to be homecoming. Uh, not necessarily the best game, but it's supposed to get get your crowd excited, get your team amped. It's your first. It's you know this is the this is the start of the season. It's your title defense. You know national television. Everyone's in town. To me, I think home. I think the first game of the season should be against the Lions. It gives them that national. It gives the Lions the national spotlight, which I think they earned last year for the way they played and knocking the Packers out in the last game of the season. Dan Campbell and his boys will be coming to play, and, and they're probably going to get. They might probably going to get blowed out. They're probably going to get beat. But I think they deserve that national stage. Um, and then in regards to the Jets. Oh, so, Z, I'm going to paint this picture for you, man. It's, uh-huh. it's Sunday night. Uh-huh. And it's the New York Jets against the Buffalo Bills in MetLife Stadium. You have you have Aaron Rodgers putting on the number eight jersey for the first time since college. You have Demar Hamlin possibly coming back from that terrible injury and starting in that game. I mean, that is just goose. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about. It. I'm not a Jet fan. I'm just a New York guy. And to me, that would be the best way for the Jets to open the season. And then. To counter that, though, the, the Jets will then have to play the Bills in Buffalo in the last game of the season. And, that, and that's the only thing that's fair. But like you, I'm cool with the Monday night thing if they want to do the 9-11. Aaron Rodgers actually said that that's what he would like to do. He would prefer to play the Giants week one. He didn't say 9-11, but he said he'd like to play the, the Giants uh, week one. A few of the other Jets said the Eagles. Those are the teams that they were pushing to play Week One, but um, you know I mean, what? If they want to start one and zero, they would they would all want the Commanders. But give me the you know what? I don't guys. know, man. The Commanders don't sleep on Sam Howell, man. Don't sleep but on Sam Howell, man. Look, look at the Jets' home opponents: Dolphins, eh, Chiefs, Eagles, Chargers, yeah. Commanders, Texans. Texans aren't going to be a pushover either. You know what you talk? I mean, they're going to be improved. You know, one line. person actually, Falcons, one person on Patriots the Jets Hill. actually said the Texans. He wanted the Texans. Oh my God! But and as far know, as yeah. me, like you know, with the Ravens, uh, you know, their home opponents are a bunch of bums, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> so I, I would like to see them start off with a, a W against the Texans. Uh, yeah. But I'd also take the Rams. Those are the two teams I'd like to either. I'd like to see them. But if you're looking at, you know, if you're looking at the Jets, like, this is the year you may want the Patriots week one. Like, the Patriots are wounded. Like, the Patriots are, are on the decline. So You know, that's what everybody's one. saying. And you know what's interesting? Vegas has the, win, the, the over-under for wins for the Patriots. Seven and a half. That's wild, dude. Mm, that's well, wild. That is firmly on the shoulders of Mac Jones. Like, they don't believe in him. And they definitely do not believe in what Bill has done since he's drafted Mac Jones and the Joe Judge thing, the Matt Patricia thing. Oh, it's God, just, Matt Patricia. Yeah, he, he, you know, there, there's a lot of uninspiring things happening in New England. How, does that, right now, how but, does that guy get a job? How, how does this guy, this guy hasn't done diddly squat in he, the last... I don't know, five years, but he's uh, he's on the Detroit Lions uh, coaching staff. No, 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 not. I'm sorry, he's not on the Detroit. Detroit. Where is he now? He's he's he he landed with some team. He got some role. I don't know how. I'm pretty sure Matt Patricia's with the Steelers now. No, Eagles. Eagles. Senior Eagles. defensive Ew. assistant because he's he's done so much the last couple of years. Well, that that I mean, Patriots they... team was awful last year. Yeah. Well, he to his credit, he was calling offense. Ah, see, you don't <laughs> so defend him. The you only can't. thing he knows about offense is that he can't stop it. He's <laughs> he's indefensible. But um, yeah. How about this? And, and, the, this nightmare scenario for the Jets. You know, yeah. what if you <laughs> do get the nine eleven game against the Giants? Right. Technically, they are the road team, but it's their home. So, yeah. in effect, you know, in effect, like. You're you're the away team. You're the home you're away team in name only, and then week two you get the Chiefs at home. 
Ooh. your home opener, <laughs> your home opener without leaving the state of New Jersey, you get the Giants and the Chiefs. You could very well start the season 0 and 2. Who's there more pressure on? If the Giants were to play the Jets week one, 9 11. Aaron Rodgers. Nine no, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I'm not even going to let you finish that sentence. <laughs> the, press, the pressure's on, on the Rogers. Jets and Aaron Rodgers. You don't think there's any pressure on the Giants after they re signed their guys, they brought back their two guys, and you don't think there's any in Dable, coach of the year? You don't think there's any pressure there? No, sir. Shiny okay. new toy. The shiny new toy, the big mouth, the savior. It's all on him. I'm going to give know, him a little credit. I mean, he's actually showed up. Like, he's at the voluntary workouts right now. He's there. Um, he's actually looking very good. Um, and he's saying all the right things. So, um, hat, hats off to him because I didn't think he was going to do that. The um, moment Garrett Wilson runs the wrong route, watch out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't – like, Garrett – Garrett Wilson is a good football player, but I don't like the comparisons. For, he's he's saying, oh, you know, I'm used to throwing to a 17, and he's doing a lot of things at 17. You just do stop. Stop. You do not right compare now. Garrett Wilson to Devontae Adams, who's arguably the probably the best or the second best wide receiver in the league. Maybe third best. Three kills. Just stop. Just play, just play the fucking game, dude. Like, nobody's asking you to compare to anybody. Just go out there and play. So he's a good player. Look forward to playing with him. He's going to be great. Like, don't be compa- Don't be saying that. That's like when Devontae Adams, when, when he got to uh, Vegas, he's like, oh, man, to go from one Hall of Famer to another Hall of Famer. He's like, what? Who's throwing you the football? Is Rich Gannon throwing you the football? Who's there? Isn't Derek Carr your quarterback now? You just it goes to it. Ken you just, you just You just handle it. You just, yeah, <laughs> Ken Stabler. You're just handing out gold jackets in the Vegas locker room, dude? <laughs> What are you doing? Don't say that. Just say, I'm excited to play here. I hope we do well. Like, Come on, use your head. Step outside of your safe area and make a statement without saying much with FCK Clout Lifestyle Apparel. Embrace the colorful chaos and stay emotionally regulated in their hoodie, snapback, graphic tees, accessories, and more. Season 3 merch is up now. Get it while you can. Go to fckclout.com and get all of your needs from men and women. That's fckclout.com. Oh, shame on me, see, shame on, shame on me. We're starting the show and we're talking about football. Meanwhile, we're in the middle of the NHL and the NBA playoffs. We open with a football story. Uh, blame the production team. Well. Moving over to the NBA playoffs, let's start there. The Heat and Lakers have commanding 3-1 leads in their series. Do you see either series wrapping up early? I can see a scenario where both end tonight. (laughs) Both could very well end tonight. But if I am going to predict one team surviving to at least a game six... I'm going with the Warriors. Yeah. They have the championship pedigree. They have Clay Thompson. They have Steph Curry. They have Andrew Wiggins. They have the weapons. Julius Randle, he's running out of gas. Jalen Brunson is running out of gas. This is exactly what happens with the Thibodeau team. They're just getting outplayed by the Miami Heat. Now, the Miami Heat, yeah, they were in the play-in tournament, but they were in the mid, they were in the middle of the pack throughout the entirety of the season. So, it's not that, you know, this was some team that was a Johnny come lately. Like, they were in contention throughout the majority of the season. And the fact that they're playing better without Tyler Hero and without Victor Oladipo, that shows you that Jimmy Butler has the superstar will. And he shines when the light is brightest. Now, the Knicks, like, this is improvement for them. This is good. This is a good thing. Now, they need to use this, right? They need to use this positive step forward to somehow lure another player here the way they lured in Jalen Brunson, the way they brought in Julius Randle, bring in another guy of a higher caliber and sell them on the fact that we're moving in the right direction. Not trade for somebody. Not do not trade for somebody. You have something here. 
if you are the Knicks. You are building well. You're building smart. Resist the urge to do something stupid. You resisted the urge to trade these guys for Donovan Mitchell. Resist the urge again. Sell them, sell this impending free agent, whomever it is. We'll call him Player X. Sell Player X on the future of this team with this core if you are the Knicks. Because I I think you're in agreement with me that the Knicks are a piece away. Well, here's my thing, Z. I can't, uh, I mean, this, if they were to lose tonight or lose this series to the Heat, it's a failure. You got a chance right now where you drew the eight seed. You are a four or five seed. This team that they're playing is the same. It's a mirror image of each other. They're very similar. They're scrappy. They're supposed to be deep. You're supposed to be going four quarters, 48 minutes, playing your hearts out. Like, there's no, other than Jimmy Butler, there's no real large star here. Like, this was the time. And you uh, to say, oh, we're building towards them. No, no, bullshit. You went out and paid Jalen Brunson all that money. He's pay- playing like a superstar. He's his his fadeaway lefty shot is beautiful. It's beautiful, and it goes in almost every time. You we you wasted that. And there's no Giannis. There's no Bucks. Like this was the time to advance to an Eastern Conference Final against Boston or against Philly, and they're blowing it. They're fucking blowing it. And to go back to you know the, the initial question. It's like, yeah, the Knicks, the Knicks are going to probably, they're up by 10 right now, but I can totally see them losing tonight and eventually losing this series. Now, on the other side, the Warriors, like you said, they're pedigree, man. They've got championship. They've got rings. They're the defending champions. I, you know, I can't see a situation where, I can see a situation where they just shoot lights out, right? Like, the, the issue the Warriors are having right now which is the first time I've seen this happen to them, is they are struggling with big ball. Big ball is killing them. They are not able, for some reason, I don't know what happened, but for some reason, they are no longer able to go small ball and blow people out anymore. And I don't know if because Jordan Poole's not not really playing well. Um, I don't know if, if Clay is maybe going to the basket more where he used to be more catch and shoot. I don't know what's happening, but the coaching dynamic, the plays that they're running right now is not the is not the old Warriors. But I have to believe that they can force a game six. I have to believe that. And the Knicks are the Knicks. The Knicks are the Knicks. Like everybody tries to talk about, oh, this great New York basketball team when? When? Since the 60s, 70s? Not the 90s. Don't come. They didn't win anything in the 90s. Yeah, they went there. Doesn't mean anything. They got to the finals in 99. Bullshit year. They got to the, I think they got to the finals uh, against the Rockets in either 94 or 95, but they didn't win. They didn't win. They didn't win anything. So the whole mentality of we're building towards something and we're, we're, we're a player away or no, fuck that. That's Nick. That You're talking like a Met fan. Like, are we going to talk about the Mets the same way? Oh, we're building towards something. We're going to... No, you should be irate at the way the Mets are right now. Are you? How can you not be? Okay. So that's the same... That's the same... It's not. It is absolutely not. And here's why. The Mets have been the drizzling... The Mets have been the drizzling chicks. And then they got to a World Series. They got to a Wild... They've done stuff. The Knicks have a 54-win series season... And then, what was the last thing you... After that, what? Who got 1999. 1999. You have one thing to hang your hat on. It was Kurt Thomas, Marcus Camby, and Jason Kidd. It was the AARP 54-win season. That's what you had as a Knicks fan. You got Ugats as a Knicks fan. Ugats. The Mets have something that they can hang their hat on. There's That's the difference between the Knicks and the... The Knicks, you can actually almost pity. I can almost pity the Knicks. In the same way that I'm almost going to pity the Rangers. Oh, They're man. getting very close to 54 again. We're, <laughs> we're, we're getting close. We're almost at 30. That's a fucking problem. The Knicks, they haven't been relevant since the 70s. Yes, you can, you know, you have the mid-90s teams where they were energized. They didn't win. You're absolutely right. 
They didn't win in the strike shortened season in 99. The lockout shortened season in 99. They didn't win in 94. And then they were in the fucking woods. They were, they were friggin' MIA until that one year with Isaiah Thomas, the welcome to this, the welcome to the playoffs year. Thanks, Isaiah. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> Thanks, Isaiah. Playoffs. Oh! You are hungry for this. You are thirsty for this. You believe. You believe. Because the expectations are so low. Then they're building back up again. But wouldn't you... Now, but, but wouldn't you... Would you agree with me that they shot themselves in the foot here where this was a golden opportunity against a team that they are arguably just as good, if not better than that? It's a growing pain. It is a growing pain. It's a stumbling block. Now, they can go toe-to-toe with them. They could. With Tyler Hero and with Victor Oladipo and Jimmy Butler, the Heat are much better. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. When whole, the Heat are a much better team than the Knicks. The Knicks have had a golden opportunity because Oladipo and Hero are gone. But you know what? It comes down to coaching. Spolstra is one of the best ever. Tibbs is one of the most most ever in the regular season. There's a reason why his teams ran out of gas. It's his coaching style. Spolstra knows how to get the best out of his players and somehow preserve them for later on. Like, he understands how to do that. Not take your foot off the gas completely, but manage along the way. Tibbs coaches with his hair on fire. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto. We really care about what's under your hood. To move along, you know, in really talking about the Knicks and really where they go from here, you know, Julius Randle has had a good series, and he's NBA 13. That's nothing to snide about. That's pretty good. But I think it's clear that he's not a superstar, right? I mean, the Knicks need him to be right now, and he's just not. Randle has one more year left on his contract. So should the Knicks be working out an extension with Randle, or is it time to shop him? Is it time to move on? Well... What do the Knicks really need? Let's think about what the Knicks... They need a superstar player. They need Julius Randle to be in a complementary role. Now, Jalen Brunson is going to be the engine here. He's the star, right? We would he's agree that star. he's the superstar. He's the superstar. I would say he's a star. He's like, Batman. He's, become, he's, he's becoming. Batman. Is he Batman? He's Batman, right? He He's becoming. He's becoming Batman, so he's, he's like the Dark Knight, right? He hasn't rised yet. Right, he hasn't risen yet. He's can still... I use a Can I use a Matt Harvey analogy, or is that bad? Oh, uh, that's fine. R.I.P. Matt. Well, <laughs> adios. Uh, you know, he's right now. He's with Razal Ghul. He's learning how to become. <laughs> right, this is Batman Begins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, if you are gonna bring in a guy that you might consider. You know, I mean, there are few. I mean, free agency. It's going to be interesting, right? It's like, how do you value guys, and what do they need, and what do you really? Need? Is it going to be a Chris Middleton? Is that going to excite you? Not at 32 years old. You know, uh, Draymond. He's available at 33. Ooh, Kristaps mm. Porzingis. Or is it, do they want to go to the Did well again with the unicorn? For the Knicks? Yes. Do they want to go to the well again with the unicorn? Is he going to get along with Thibodeau? Kyle Kuzma. That could be interesting. Busevich. Busevich. You had <laughs> Dylan Brooks. Sorry. Because we're saying I, I they need, we, we do agree that they need a big guy, right? It's like they do. they've got a, they've got Jalen Brunson. They've also got Barrett, who's a six nine guard. You know, that's the thing is they're 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 toting out as their three. It's Brunson, Randall, and Barrett. It's like 
but he's not there yet. RJ is not RJ is not where he needs to be. Guys aren't scaring anybody, man. No. Now, do you, if you want to have a beast down low that'll take the pressure off of Julius Randle, then maybe you do make a run at Draymond Green. Yeah, but would Lopez. he come to the Knicks? Brook Lopez is 36, though. Like, I mean, good for a short term. Um, if you're looking for somebody that you can kind of build a future around, like, you may want to consider trying to, you know, trying to go in with a Kuzma. Like, that might work, because he's younger. He's significant. He's significantly younger than some of these guys. So, that might be a guy, unless they really like somebody in the draft. Unless, you know, I, I don't know. The, we haven't done our early mock, or early, 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 way too early mock projection. But, you, you definitely need a big. You definitely need a big. Now, if you want to shuffle some pieces around... You, you can do that, but you know Julius Randle has made himself a home in New York, right? He was kind of a journeyman. He's arrived. Now he can be a second banana or even a, a tertiary player. RJ's not there yet. If he ever arrives, so it's really going to be who can you bring in? And I would extend Julius Randle. I, I would go. Huh. I, I would give him maybe one or two years. You know, it's interesting, one of the things you said is you said you felt like Randall was running out of gas. Is he running out of gas, or is this just who he is? Let me give you a stat for Julius Randall. Julius Randall is shooting 34% in the playoffs from the field on two-point tries. That is the worst percent field goal percentage in the history of the NBA playoffs for a starting player. Now, you have a couple of reasons now, why. Now, now, now. <laughs> there are a couple of reasons why. You have to look into the quality of the looks, right? Miami plays defense. Is Miami playing him into bad shots? Or is he just chucking shit up? So if he's just chucking shit up with bad shot selection, otherwise he's being forced into it by Miami. Is he running out of gas? Because he, how many minutes has he logged this season? We know that Thibodeau, like, again... Thibodeau coaches with his hair on fire, and that means he burns out his star players. So, it could well be that there's a combination of the three out there, and maybe he is just, he's not, he, he's not that upper Rui echelon Hachimura. player. Hashu, I mean, 26, that's not bad. That would be a pretty good idea, but I think the Lakers are going to try and lock him up just because he is young, you know, and he could give you that little bit of youth that that roster most desperately needs. My whole thing is this, is I really truly believe Randall's a small market guy. The whole stance he takes of not speaking to the media and disappearing in the playoffs, that's small market stuff, man. Jalen Brunson has emerged as the best player on the Knicks. He's a star. And Julius Randall can't be Robin. He's not Robin. He doesn't hustle after loose balls. He misses makeable shots. And and this is all coming from an, I'm not and I'm not trying to take anything away from the guy because he is an NBA third teamer. And that's really that's that's fantastic. That's something you can hang your hat on and be proud of every day and twice on Sunday. But the problem is, is this is too much of the story with him. Is that when the lights get bright, you freaking disappear. Like, look at Jimmy Butler, man. Like, look at how, look at what he, what he's done for his team. And he missed the first game, or he missed the, he missed the game against the, he missed one of the games of Massacre with Garden. It's the second game, I think. You know. Well, the thing with Julius Randle is that. He, you know, the behavior off the court definitely sullies. He, it definitely sullies what he does on the court, just because he is mercurial, to say the least. And you know that caused the whole uproar after his first year. In his, in his second year, when he was struggling, all of a sudden, but like, I don't want to be here. This is that. So, you know, it's one of those things that is this going to be a continuous behavior pattern? If it's a continuous behavior pattern and it, it hasn't shown to be just because he hasn't, he hasn't reached that low 
I, it remains to be seen what that is long term. But this is the most success that Julius Randle has had in his career, and there's something to be said for that. Now, like maybe you know, maybe he just is not a a, a Robin, like like you said. Yeah. That that that's fine. Like you can if you're making a core, right? If you're building a core, you need multiple guys, and you really need to build that depth. And you know. Julius Randle could be the third best player in the team. Like, that's fine. Like, I, I would say that Julius Randle would be a fine third, number three. And that takes the pressure off of RJ, too, right? Because now he doesn't have to be your number three. RJ could be your number four. So, in free agency, adding another guy, I think, would benefit Julius Randle huge. Now, you know it's got to be the right guy like what happened with Jimmy Butler and Miami I mean Miami lucked into Jimmy Butler I mean you're lo- if you're looking at that because the, the way the situation blew up in Chicago and Minnesota right anything can happen who's, who's to say what happened now like you you know as well as I that I was I was lobbying hard for the Knicks to get Jimmy Butler I, you know, he's a different animal. He's a different cat. So if you can get a killer like that and Bill and put him with Randall and Brunson, the Knicks, they the Knicks shoot up the standings in the East. They're up there with Philly. Maybe not Boston and Milwaukee. Well, who knows what's going to happen with Milwaukee now that Budenholzer's out? But That's wild. What you yeah, that? I you know. I understand the need for a change of voice. Like, he doesn't make in-game adjustments. Sometimes he doesn't use his timeouts. Giannis was frustrated that he wasn't on the best player defensively. You know, like, he wasn't on Jimmy Butler. Yeah, eventually, you know, he wore, his, he wore out his welcome in Atlanta. He wore out his welcome in Milwaukee. That team, that window was closing on the, the Bucks anyway. So this may effectively slam it shut, depending on who they get. Rumor has it it's Kenny Atkinson, who's the main leader, who's uh, the main uh, lead for this job. And he's a teacher. He's not a, a ready-made contender type coach. Like, he, he's the guy you go to for a rebuild. So now, that's an interesting idea, too. Because... Lopez is a free agent. Middleton's a free agent. Is this the year that the Bucks blow it up? Like, that's going to be interesting. And, you know, who's to say that a couple pieces aren't available off that team? I don't know. We'll definitely, we'll definitely see. For all the grill masters, green thumbers, home repair heroes, and DIY aficionados in the Richmond, Virginia area, If you're looking for a personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience, look no further than Thacker Ace Hardware in Colonial Heights, Virginia. Owner Don Rackley and his team of local experts have everything you need to tackle all of your home projects. I'm talking paints by Benjamin Moore and Clark in Kensington, power tools by Craftsman and Milwaukee, electrical, plumbing, hardware, and let's not miss the grill. Weber. Big Green Egg, Traeger, Blackstone, top shelf, amazing. And for all you green thumbers, their nursery department is fantastic. Give them a call today, 804-766-4223, or stop by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. That's 804-766-4223, or swing by 27 Dunlop Village in Colonial Heights. Thacker Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. But there's one thing that we are looking at right now, and it's the Carolina Hurricanes. They are not the Rangers. As many Rangers as they have on their team, they are definitely not the Rangers. The Canes have let the Devils win one game. One game. But they've been whacking them around pretty good. They smoked them. 6-1. In game 6-1. And now the 
now the Canes have a 3-1 series lead. So, is it over for the boys from New Jersey? Well, if I, if, I mean, listen, hats off to you because you called it last week. You said, you know, don't sleep on the Canes. They are the number one seed. They were, you know, a top, they were a top seed. Uh, their, their experience, they're gritty. And I think the Devils are just a year or two away. Um, they're, their inexperience in the playoffs is really showing up now because you just can't always keep coming back. Because a team as good as the Canes, they're gonna they're gonna stomp on your throat and keep you down. They absolutely will. And but the Devils are coming. I mean, they're coming, but this is this isn't the year, man. This is this is not gonna happen this year. Well, a year of seasoning is definitely going to make them a more formidable team. They definitely need to figure out their goaltending situation. So, is Akira Schmidt, is he a flash in the pan, or is this Vanacek's team? I, I don't know. So, after the first round of the playoffs, it looked pretty good. But now, not so much. Now, if you look down the down the roster, right? You have Aho, fucking Yemi, Natchez. Jordan Stahl, Paul Stastny, our buddy Derek Stepan, uh, Tara Vine, you have Jesper Foss, Paul Yarvey, huge bust. Sounds like you're naming Rangers. I'm naming a few. You have Svechnikov. <laughs> like, you have an amazing roster. Like, this roster is amazing. Gostaspear, Brent Burns, Calvin Dahan, Pesci, Brady Shea. Slavin, like that. This team, right, is pro is poised. They are poised for a major run. If they get anything out of their goaltending, right, I think it's Kaketov is in in goal. Peter Katek Kaketov. Sorry, Peter, if I've mispronounced your name. There's a lot of there's some Y's in there and and an O that's out of place. My apologies. And former Ranger backup Auntie Ronda is also in the Canes organization too. So you know more rain, more X's on this roster, but they've built a battle-hardened team, a physical team, a skilled team. Dare I say, the most complete team left. And, and, and yes, I know I'm in you know like blaspheming because I'm not bowing at the altar of Leon Dreisaitl right now. You know, I'm not bowing at the altar of Connor McDavid. That's two guys. This team runs deep. And they're going to make a serious run. Like, this is a serious run for serious hockey fans. Now, kudos to the Devils, you know? They ran the Rangers out off the ice. They did that. Right? Um, you, you take your lumps. You got, Ger- you got Gallant fired. You got Gerard Gallant fired. Now, that's intriguing. Where do the Rangers go from here? But... What did you think you know, of the Gallant firing? I think it was, you know, Mike. much like the Mike Budenholzer fired, you know, I, I thought it was rash, but I understand why. For the same reason. He made no adjustments. He just ran the same... He ran the same team out there hoping that a different result would happen. And then when they laid that egg in game seven, like, I understand trying to protect your players. I do. And he did. It was a valiant effort on his part to try and do so. But no, you can't say there was a good effort when they got completely skunked in game seven. And your superstar players show don't show up. They show that they were done. So, I don't know. I'm interested to see what becomes available. If Mike Sullivan becomes available from the Penguins. You hear rumors about Joel Quenville. Now, according to Chris Drury, uh, Quenville is not in the running. But Joel Quenville's won a couple of things I like to call the Stanley Cup. So He's got his name on that trophy. He's got his name on it a couple times. 
So I think that it would be a mistake. Yes, I understand that he was at the helm of the Chicago Blackhawks during the whole um, the whole sexual assault Kyle Beach situation. So you definitely need to look at that and monitor it and see what's going to happen. Character-wise, that that's a huge question mark. So that that's another one that you need to monitor. Do you just go with the up-and-coming guy, like a Chris Knobloch, who's the head coach at Hartford, the the uh, AHL affiliate? He knows the team. He knows the organization. They know what he's about. Chris Drury hired him. So maybe that's the route the Rangers go. But, you know, we're definitely, we're definitely in a resurgence of the rivalry. And that's exciting. That's definitely exciting. It's harkening back to a time when things were competitive. Because when the Rangers have been good lately, the Devils have not been good. And when the Devils were good, the Rangers were horrible. So, I think, and even the Islanders. The Islanders are not that far off. I mean, they went to -to back-to-back Eastern Conference Finals. So, you know... That wasn't that long ago. But the Canes are on a different level, mostly because they cherry-picked a lot of former Rangers and a, and a former Islander in Calvin DeHaan. But they're clearly the class, and these other two teams, these other teams are going to be fighting to try and get into the recognition. They're going to try and fight to be second best here because the Canes are set up, and... There's a good chance that they're going to be representing the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup final. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran-owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that DNZ sent you. Fair or foul? Judging the more messed up moments of the week. All right, boys and girls. We have a statement. It's either fair or foul. Here we go. Fair or foul, number one. The Chicago Blackhawks should expect to win between one three titles in the next 10 years now that they have secured the number one pick and presumably Connor Bedard. Yeah, I'm going to say fair. I mean, everyone says this guy is like a mixture of Sidney Crosby and Patrick Kane. I believe those guys have their name on Lord Stanley Cup a few times. Uh, Like you said, everyone's expecting him to take Bedard. They should be able to get at least one title with this guy. It's fair for one. I would say it's fair for one. Because your best player, especially on the rookie deal, you can get a good... You could definitely get a good run because you can build around him. Now, it's definitely going to be in the future because this Chicago Blackhawks roster is not exactly... It's not exactly awe-inspiring. Right? They traded Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane was on his last leg, as we saw. Jonathan Taves is gone. Like, there's not much talent here right now. So if he can bring it, if he can start the movement, I think that they'll be in a much better spot. Because then you have a guy like Seth Jones, right? Seth Jones former top pick of the Blue Jackets. He's kind of... He's been moving around. 
he's kind of like your highlight player. He's kind of he's he's not a he's not a Batman. So this has a lot of youth, a lot of inexperience, and we're gonna see what this kid's gonna be made of because he's got to. Pretty much, he's pretty much got to make the jump. If teams are changing how they, if teams and leagues are changing how they structure the roster and change the age limit to get this guy in, you got to be pretty special to do that, right? We hear about the last time we heard the hype being this big was not that long ago with Lafreniere. Lafreniere. As big as he is, he doesn't take contact well. This kid, according to scouts, does take contact well. So if he can do that, and if he can be the stud, you got something here. But if he's like Lafreniere, that might just be a kind of a bust here. But we're definitely going to see... But. The Blackhawks have a lot, a lot of work to do. And it may be a little unfair to put it all on this 17-year-old kid. But that's sports for you. Fair or foul? Number two, Joe Missoula is getting outcoached by Doc Rivers in the uh, Philly Celtics series. Yeah, I'm going to say it's foul. I don't think he's being outcoached. I just think the 76ers are a better and deeper team two MVPs now and Harden and Embiid. Maxi comes off the bench. He should be a starter on he would be a starter on other teams. And you know, people laughed at me when I said Boston should have blown up their team a few years ago. What if they get knocked out of the playoffs by Philly this year? That's a huge step backward. And where would Boston go from here? You know, so I I don't say foul. I think the problem with Boston is is like they've got you know, they're, they're taking a lot of shots. They're, they don't really have an inside presence. Speed's a problem. Harden's a problem. And they're, just, they're just getting really... Um, the other team is scoring more than they are. That's really just what's happening here. It's fair from an X's and O's standpoint, right? He has the ability to change this, and he's not. Also, the one thing that makes it fair is that you're, you can't leave timeouts on the table. Yeah, you can't true. do that. You got this team is also different than last year's team. It's different than the team from two years ago. They have a lot yeah. of the same players, but it, you know, players they, it's different. They've changed. They're, it's not. It's not the same game. No, it is absolutely true. Like people have, and teams have caught on to what they do. Right. So it's definitely something that it's important to note. And it's not Brad Stevens. It's not Ime Udoka. It's it's he's his own voice, right? But at the same time, he is really young. So it's one of those. I mean, he's young for NBA coaches. So it's one of those things that you know you are doing a lot of on the job training. And for a third dude, he's thirty four, right? Al Horford is what eight years older than him, nine years older than him. Like this guy was in eighth grade when Al Horford was in Florida. So. You know, it, it's got to be it's got to be an interesting locker room dynamic. But he's learning on the job, and frankly, like he's going to learn from this. The team will be better for it, and I'm sure that you know, as he gets older and as he gets more matured in the coaching ranks, he's going to know I can't leave these timeouts. Right? He's he, I just can't leave them on the burner here. I got to use them. I got to make in-game adjustments. I got to make switches. I have to, you know, better utilize my roster. Right. It's growing pain. But Doc has been there. Doc has done that. Now, he's got the requisite Hall of Famers. He has the requisite Hall of Famers, so we might be on to something here. So, we will definitely see what comes from here, but in terms of the strategy and the management no it's definitely it's definitely fair definitely fair fair or foul number three Nikola Jokic should have been suspended for shoving Suns owner Matt Ishbia with his forearm 
Nah, that's foul. He's going for the ball. Sun Zoner touched him. Don't touch players. Don't get in the way of the ball. And nothing will happen to you. I'm I'm on his side here. I don't think anything else should happen. I think it is foul. It's it's completely foul. If you look at the owner, right? Look at the video. When we watch the video, Jokic gave him a little love tap. And then Ishbia did his best blade. It was just like, oh! <laughs> and like you see his arms go up. You can hear the noise, even though you know, even though it's muted, right? You, you can hear the noise that he's making. He looked almost like when um, Jeffrey used to throw out jazz on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Like that's kind of what it looked like. It looked <laughs> so overblown and over exaggerated that he was trying to draw a tech. Now, if it was Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban would be getting fined and suspended just because he's Mark Cuban. Now, do you want to set the tone if you're Adam Silver? It, it, do you want to turn and fine Ishbia for his trying to work the ref and trying to get a tech on Jokic? I'd be fine by that. Send a message. Send a message. Find him. Do something. But this ain't David Stern. Let's just put it that way. Adam Silver is willing to let this go, but if this is what if this is what Ishbi is going to do, this is going to be a very interesting tenure in Phoenix. But as far as his interaction with Nikola Jokic, no, no suspension necessary for the Joker. love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave. From the classic OB to Dutch Apple to Campfire S'mores and many more. Check out their website, SweetLifeBrownieCo.com for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook too at SweetLifeBrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043 and tell them D&Z sent you. That's SweetLifeBrownieCo.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co., because there's always room for a brownie. The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. boys and girls you know what time it is it's time for the alleged superstar of the week here's how it goes we put up a poll on our twitter account at fade route dnz and you vote and you vote and you vote and you vote and the winner of said vote gets a shout out on this here show and the coveted ass trophy and do you know who took on the coveted ass trophy last week i don't our boys in blue the new york rangers choking dogs choking dogs but that was last week. This is this week. Who you got for your nominees, Deke? Oh, man. First up, I got your boy, Gary Sanchez. Signed, wasn't able to get a job to sign a minor league contract in the New York Mets. Like, how is this possible? Gary Sanchez was, like, supposed to be the next big thing. He had a great season his first his first year there. He was hitting bombs. Everyone knew he wasn't a good catcher. But, geez, Gary, we thought you'd be able to hit, at least on the major league level. And now you have to sign a minor league contract with the Mets. You're two years away from being out of, ba- out of baseball entirely. Gary Sanchez, man, you are my legislative star of the week. Number two, I'm sticking with Yankees here. Aaron Hicks. 
<laughs> so somehow, some way, Judge makes his way back to the 40-man roster, and you still didn't get DFA'd. They decided to put somebody else, Cabrera, on. Oh no, they decided to put, I believe, um, the catcher. On, yeah, well, yeah, Peraza on injured on the injured list. Oh my God! And I think they moved also one of the catchers to uh, the 60-day DL. All right, oh I, yeah, the, the other guy they got from Minnesota, Rortvin. That guy's <laughs> never gonna play. I'm conv- I'm convinced he's never let's, gonna play. Let's put it this way. The home run you hit a few days ago at Yankee Stadium was your first hit in Yankee Stadium all year. It's May. It's freaking May. Maybe he's last. Aaron Hicks, you are the alleged superstar of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, another guy, Carlos Correa. So let me get this straight, Carlos. You you turn down the deal with the Twins to go try to play for the Giants. Giants find out you're hurt. You leave the Giants. Mets try to sign you. They find out you're hurt. You go back to the Twins. And when you go back there, you have the audacity to hit 185 with five home runs and 20, 124 at bats. And your answer for being booed yesterday is, I should be booed. Dude, <laughs> bravo, bravo, Carlos, bravo. You're not even good enough for a small market. Good thing you're not playing for the Mets right now because they would be trashing you. Carlos Correa, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Z, what do you have? Well, we got a few heavy hitters. Heavy hitter. Heavy, heavy. heavy. We're going to start with Bob Huggins. Yeah. Anti-gay slur on the West Virginia radio station. Took a million dollar salary reduction. And it's almost time for Uncle Bobby put out the pasture here. Bobby, suspended three games. Yeah. Why are you on local radio, dude? Well, never mind that. Like, who Come cares about... Come on the about... podcast, man. Uh, honestly, who cares about where he's doing it? You can't be saying LGBTQIA. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Say what you said. Period. Absolutely not. <laughs> Under no circumstances... It's not, oh, it's a different time. Da, da, da. No, under no circumstances can you say this. Bob Huggins, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Glenn Kuyper. Speaking of, you cannot say this anytime. Dropping the N word on the A's Royals broadcast. In reference to the Negro League Museum in Kansas City. We call it a Freudian slip, Glenn. That's all you need to know. Never can you ever say this. And yet it escaped your lips. Glenn Kuyper, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And anecdotally, Dallas braided. Your explanation, like... Oh, even though I was standing right next to him, I couldn't, I couldn't hear him because there are things going on in the production. You have people in your ear. You're worried about cues and camera cuts and that, that, that. dude, dude. I'll get you a shovel. Keep digging. <laughs> Keep actually, you know what? Let's just call it the A's TV broadcast team. Both of you guys, you're my alleged superstar of the week. And on a lighter note. Finally, it's supposed to be a lighthearted segment. Suns owner Matt Ishbia for doing his best flop with Nikola Jokic with that little that little love tap and Ishbia going down like he got shot. Matt, you gotta do better than that. You gotta plant your feet, draw the foul, draw the contact. Have you not watched basketball before? That's how you draw a charge. I'm just saying. Matt Ishbia, you are my alleged superstar of the week. I think we said our piece. Go to our Twitter page at FadeRouteDNZ and vote, and vote, and vote, and vote, and for our nominee. Just do better, boys. Just do better.
can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Pop Stars, located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Pop Stars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio, quickly expanding. In person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to Westchester Pop Stars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester Pop Stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, or Google. Order up! It is time for us to order up. Order up, order up. We are ordering up because of the impending NFL schedule release. We are going to order up the top five NFL games we can't wait to see next season. From five to one. Who you got, Dave? All right, first, uh, I'm going with New York Giants, New York Jets. Uh, lots of pride on the line here. Rodgers wants to play this game, the first game of the season. I think it'd be cool if they played it on 9-11. And, we, you know, the Jet fans want to see how much better their team is against their quote-unquote rival, I guess. Um, number four... I've got another Jet game. I want to see Jets versus the Bills. And I want to, I would really like to see this on Sunday night to open the season. But the Bills are the only football team that actually plays in New York. And <laughs> I want to see if they're still the best team in New York. Like, I want to see that game. Uh, number three, Chiefs Bengals. This is the new Brady Manning or the Marino Elway. Like, this is now the game to watch. Lots of points, lots of scoring, lots of talent on both sides of the ball. This is scheduled and ready for New Year's Eve. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, next one up, I got Jets versus Eagles. Yes, I got three Jets games in my top five. Shame on me. But I guess I want to see a lot of Jets games just because of their new look. And the Eagles on paper have a top five defense. And I want to see how Rodgers plays against them. Uh, So that's my number two. And the number one game I want to see, I want to see the Chiefs versus the Dolphins. This game is going to be played in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, This is going to be played at Deutsche Bank Park. Um, This was the former home of the Frankfurt Galaxy, a team that I used to work for. And this will be the first uh, pro game in Frankfurt um, and the first football game played there in 16 years. So looking forward to that one. What do you got, good choices you have a lot of great choices for me i gotta go for at least for starters my number five bill's jags okay that's finally decent right you you have the jaguars coming off a division win coming off a playoff win like can they take the next step yes it's in tottenham hotspur stadium it's a london game because after all it's the jaguars So, you know, but take, strip that away, right? Strip it away. What do you got? Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, two really good football teams going toe to toe. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. You put that right in my bank. Number four, Christmas Day, Giants Eagles. It has the the potential to ruin my Christmas, (laughs) but it also has the potential to make it the merriest Christmas of all. If, by some grace of God, the Giants do not shit themselves like they did in the playoffs. So, I have higher expectations for the Giants this year. The Eagles are the Eagles. We know what they are. Let's see if the Giants can stand toe-to-toe. I think they can but 
we're going to see. Number three, I'm with you on Chiefs Dolphins. Tyreek Hill, a little bit of a revenge game there. You have the defending champions. You have the Dolphins. Who knows who their quarterback is going to be? Like, we don't know. (laughs) Could it be Tua? Could it be Teddy? Could it be somebody else? It's one big mystery wrapped in a riddle. So, I'm intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued by that. Number two. I'm with you. A lot of Chiefs on here, right? Like, Bengals Chiefs. Yeah. Joe Burrow, Kansas City, you know, Burrowwood Stadium, a rematch of the AFC title game. Can the Bengals do what they've been doing? And was the a- was the AFC Championship game a flip? Can they use this to propel themselves? Because it's on New Year's Eve. Can they propel themselves into the playoffs, possibly ahead of the Chiefs in the standings? This could have major implications. So, I'm here for it. That's going to be an explosive game. And number one... I hope, I hope, I hope this game is on 9-11. I want this game to be on 9-11 so bad. It would be the perfect, perfect way to ring in that day. Jets, Giants. Like, I want to see that. I want to see... It has to be week one. The NFL would be stupid and short-sighted if they did not make this week one. Aaron Rodgers is welcome to the big time, right? Welcome to New York moment. His savior complex will be fully engaged. His press secretary, Pat McAfee, is going to be all over this, like white on rice. And then you have the whole backdrop of 9-11. It's too perfect. It is too perfect a scenario not to happen otherwise it's just a fine home game but it, it's, it's just a fine home game but you add in the other layers and all of a sudden all of a sudden you took it from here right you took it from here all the way up to here you ratcheted it up and imagine just imagine how much better it could be. And imagine like the legend, right, of Aaron Rodgers. In his own mind at least. Coming in on that stage and shining. Or the converse, if the Giants beat the Jets, and how much egg would be on the face. And how many immediate overreactions and hair on fire moments we'd have from guys like Rich Eisen, guys like Mike Greenberg, you know, Jetman, Joe Beningo. Oh, Joe Beningo would be beside himself. Joe Beningo would be absolutely fit to be tough. And that's what this whole scenario boils down to. Bring me the chaos. Bring me the fun. Bring me Giants Jets week one. This has been the Fade Route with DNZ. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast. So until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route, but we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, be sure to like and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Turn on subscription notifications and tell your friends. Spread the word. Spread it wide.